This is the June 11th school committee meeting. I'd like to start by entertaining a motion to uh, approve the bills. So I'll make, oh, go ahead, Jan. I'll make the motion we approve the bills. I'll second. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor? Thank you, unanimous. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes of May 21st? So moved, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Thank you. Motion being made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes? There being none, all those in favor? Thank you, unanimous. We uh, do not have a student representative tonight because he has graduated and, <laughs> um, and uh, is hopefully uh, enjoying himself a little bit before the next chapter begins. Do we have anyone from the PTA tonight? Okay. Uh, I will point out on their behalf the uh, big trivia night is coming up. Is that that's uh, this Saturday, right? So hopefully everyone can make that. Anyone from the special needs pack? Okay. Anything from the CTA tonight? Okay. Is there any public comment tonight? Ms. Quist, is there anything from the CTA tonight? No. no. Okay, <laughs> terrific. All right. So uh, we have the pleasure, uh, kind of a bittersweet, I guess, pleasure, to recognize our uh, FY18 retirees and to thank them for their years of service. Uh, some of those folks are here, and we'd like to recognize them. I'll read all of the names. Uh, Edmondo Borja is not here tonight. Is that correct? Okay but he has um, uh, dedicated 13 years of service to the Clinton Public Schools, so thank you. Nancy Devaney is here, however, and we'd like to thank you for your 26 years of service to the Clinton Public Schools. Come on up and get this certificate. I thought I saw you in the back. So uh, congratulations. I guess we'll, should we do this? What's, congratulations. What's next? Fine. <laughs> Good for you. Going to the beach in September. That's, that's for you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. And if we just thank remain standing, I guess. Oh, uh, dedicating 18 years of service oh, to the Clinton Public Schools is Jean General. Congratulations. Thank you. And what's next for you? Um, a little bit of travel, planning our son's wedding. Okay. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I got one more for you. Oh, there's, there's all kinds of gifts now that uh, the end is near. Okay. Uh, dedicating 12 years of service to the Clinton Public Schools is Joe Marino, who is not here tonight, I believe. Yes. Uh, 11 years of service to the Clinton Public Schools, Michael Murray. Congratulations, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Big plans on the horizon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kids and whatever my wife wants. So, <laughs> you're a wise man. Congratulations and thank you. For 21 years of service to the Clinton Public Schools, it's my uh, honor to recognize Carol O'Malley. Very welcome. 
What's next? What's on the horizon? Well, usually I would have you all stand up and do a little song and a dance, <laughs> but I got nothing left. <laughs> like, this will not, this will thank you very <laughs> much. Thanks. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And uh, 17 years of service. Uh, I don't believe he's here. Is Walter O'Malley? Okay. 11 years of service dedicated to the Clinton Public Schools. It's my honor to recognize Alita Pasternak. What's next? Well, they're over there. Okay. And we're raising grandchildren. Congratulations. Uh, second time around. So. And you're being so great. Thank you very much. Don't, don't say uh, it. Don't, 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 sorry. Okay. All right. And I intend to sew. Yeah. Oh, oh excellent. Great. Excellent. Thank you. And with 13 years of service, Brenda Seymour. She's is not, she's not here. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We have for our retirees, both uh, current, future, and past, we have, uh, we have a cake in the back. So thank you very much for uh, everything that you've done for our students, for your colleagues, uh, and for the town of Clinton. You're very much appreciated. So uh, I'll entertain a motion for a brief recess so we can recognize our retirees and uh, have a little cake. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? We stand in a brief recess. Not in favor of the cake. <laughs> yes. At this time, we'll resume the meeting. Uh, Congratulations once again to our retirees. I should have mentioned that those citations were delivered by Representative Naughton's office. And uh, so I'm happy to stand in as a poor facsimile from his, uh, his office. Mr. Superintendent. Yep. So the first thing is just the end of the year goals update. So we had four um, school-wide goals. You do have a packet in here. Uh, district goals, I'd say. The first one was an educator evaluation saying by June of 2018, 100% of all administrators and teachers will have a completed evaluation consistent with state regulations and the negotiated CTA instrument. Um, and on the first line, I just said this goal is extremely close to completion and will be met. So by the time this the month is over, we will have had 100% of staff will have uh, been evaluated. Um, I know I'm, we're not under the same contractual obligations with the administrators, so I'm, uh, I'm letting them kind of handle the end of the year we'll mm -hmm. be doing ours with sure. them um, next week and uh, most of the formatives and summatives have been have been done there's still a few that I know that they're kind of catching up with and some of those are you know just the you know there's everyone's got different uh, procedures leaves or whatever they might have had that they were on so I'm uh, just trying to catch up get the evidence and get them done so we will make sure we have um, all of them done, which would be a nice change uh, to have everyone have their form in um, TeachPoint, and then that will allow us to just do a direct export from TeachPoint right to the state, and we have to upload that data, which will which will time up well. So I did, as evidence there, that is a printout from um, I think it was last Friday, just showing the total number of recorded forms. There's the, obs the observation evidence collection tool, the sign off, which basically it's like a narrative observation form, the summative informative evaluation reports. Classroom walkthroughs is like a shorter um, observation, the announced observation, uh, formative assessments, those were given at the mid-year to uh, developing educators. Um, and you can see some of the collection of evidence forms uh, that they would initiate. And those, these are just forms that were initiated by our um, administrative staff that evaluate. So there's a lot more forms in here for, like, for those collection of evidence. There's literally thousands of documents in there that have been uploaded by this by the staff as part of their evidence so um, and there's a little update from each each of the schools here but I think we're, we're pretty much on track I'd say our our biggest uh, objective with the school this year was just to make sure that we were in compliance and following the um, the system kind of as it was designed and I think now that we've done that this year next year we'll become a little more focused and um, on uh, in particulars and how we can best leverage the system now that we now that we know it. 
Goal two, uh, well-structured lessons by June of 2018, 100% of all classrooms have high expectations indicated through clearly articulated measurable objectives for each lesson as evidenced by learning walks. So we've done a, a total of seven learning walks this year. Uh, learning walks basically where we get a team uh, together that goes out and observes classrooms. In the beginning, a lot of those were small. They were like building based. It might just been me, the principal, and the assistant principal. Uh, the last two that we've done, the one we did in June and one we did in March were larger where we had teachers involved or department chairs. Uh, the most recent one we did in June was the, um, we did it at the elementary school. We actually had middle school teachers who would be moving to the elementary school participate in it so that they could help us gather evidence, but also so they could see uh, how that building operates. Um, so I know in the, on the June 6th learning walk, nine, nine of the nine classrooms we observed, we had three teams that each observed three classrooms for 20 minutes each and then debriefed based on the evidence they gathered. Um, but we saw that 100% of them had um, learning objectives, clearly articulated learning objectives that they were referencing and, and uh, uh, communicating to the students. So overall, 88% of the classrooms we observed this year um, demonstrated evidence of those objectives. Um, if you factor in the fact that we did a, the PD we did on this was on November 9th, um, of the classrooms we've observed post that PD date, 96% of them and actually, and then, like I said, the last one we did was 100%. So, um, you know, I think, I call it a significant progress. I mean, can we say that 100%? I don't know if we can actually say 100% of every single classroom, but I think we, we're definitely happy with the evidence that we saw. And there's uh, some evidence, some artifacts in here behind that summary. It's just sort of a learning walk memo from the uh, March 22nd one, an email from the June 6th one. And then there's some, um, also the March 13th PD day, uh, there's a, we did a lot of vertical alignment where teachers were looking at um, the key outcomes that they need, key standards for their, their courses and trying to look at what objectives they would write um, in planning and how they would uh, assess the mastery of that objective and what they would do if the student dem didn't demonstrate mastery. So that PD day um, schedule is also in here. And that kind of ties into the third goal, adjustments to practice. Um, by June 2018, 100% of teachers will be able to provide evidence of meeting diverse needs by providing differentiated interventions or enhancements for, student base, uh, for students based on assessment data. A lot of this was done in the professional development in Jan January 31st. We kind of talked about this back at that time um, where there were 208 student support forms completed by the staff as they looked at data and they tried to write, look at what, what interventions or what things they could change to support their students. Um, and then also on that March 13th PD day when they looked at the curriculum and they said, what are the essential skills, what are the key standards, the key outcomes that students need to be able to do when they complete your course to be successful for the next grade or the next course? And then what are objectives that we would write to, to uh, identify those and then how would we assess them and then what would we do if they, if they did not meet those? Um, so those are some updates on that. Once again, I think that's when I think we made significant progress. I think we made a lot of... Um, uh, brought that to the uh, attention. I think we got more of that mindset going of kind of we need to adapt to meet the needs and make sure all students are reaching that standard. Uh, I think it's difficult to, you know, all these goals, it's always difficult to say 100%, but. Sure. Um, and then the fourth one, student engagement. Um, by June 2018, 100% of teachers will provide a safe learning environment which engages all students as evidence of student discipline data and attendance data. And um, December 22nd PD day was mentioned where we looked at a lot of, um, we looked at different things, um, uh, different uh, other best practices in other school districts about things like mindfulness. We looked at things like bias, um, talked about those, talked about student handbooks and looked at some data. And then um, the other thing though was that the, I think this goal sort of morphed a little bit as we went through the year. And um, you know, towards the end of the year, we were focusing on, we did the ALICE online training. Mm -hmm. We did the ALICE building-based training. I think we had, uh, it was like 330 staff members completed the online ALICE training already. Um, there's a few that haven't yet, but most of them are either, um, uh, it's like cafeteria staff and some people that we're kind of tracking down. Um, so, and then there's some you know, updates from each of the schools in there looking at some of their their referrals and their attendance rates and suspension rates. So, so that's sort of the overview of the goals. Um, like I said, I, I, I think I'm, I'm pleased with the progress. I think that our professional development was tailored specifically in these areas to help us make progress. 
Um, but I don't think any one of these things are things that we can just check off a box and say like, yep, now we're done with them. They're all works in progress that so we'll continue to build off of and, and look to take the next step in the future. Steve, is he, yeah. and then the, uh, the, the, the learning walks you do, besides yeah. that, do you feel that you and, and the other administrators have adequate time during the, during the week to just walk around? You know, and, and just kind of, you know, I mean, these are more of a formal walk when you get yeah. kind of an assessment, but, you know, like both the principals, vice principals, yourself, just to, you know, see how everything's going on a, on a kind of a, a normal day, if you will. Yeah. Do you feel you have, they, and I'm sure the, and the feedback you get from the administrator, they have the time, I know, I know they're busy, you know, with, with, with all the new stuff, too, to, to just kind of, you know, say hi to the students and see how the day's going. I think it, um, I think it really varies on the time of the year. Right. You know, and I think even more so, it's kind of funny how it's sort of like a, like a catch-22, right? You know, now it's like you're trying right now to do, you know, the last couple of weeks, administrators are trying to do, spend so much of their, any free time they get, like writing summaries and evalu uh, summative evaluations and doing all that kind of stuff. And now it's like, well, now you can't can't get in the classroom because you're trying to finish those things up when you can or meeting with with um, with people. But I think, I mean, I think overall, um, you know, we're able to, um, but I think that, you know, it's always, it's always a challenge, but it's always something you just need to make a priority. Anything else? I think it's commendable. I, I think that um, the approach to look at evaluation as a, a growth model, and, and hopefully, you know, you're, you're building toward that with all of the staff, is uh, not only significant. I think for the perspective that we want for all of our educators to be lifelong learners, but it's a great role model example for the students that you know we get better at the things that we work at and you know we're all on this continuum and uh, I, you know I, I, it is one of the <clears throat> there's a lot of things that I, I disagree with about the state model but but I think the perspective that it, it is about continuing to look at our practice and what we do well and where we can be better is, is the right perspective so uh, you know Thank you, thank the team for all of their efforts on that. And I think that the, the educator evaluation system has been something that we've talked about as an administrative team, you know, throughout the year. I've had a lot of, you know, individual conversations with each of the principals as we can as I kind of go from you know building to building during the week and and um, like I said, I think we're really I almost feel like this year we've kind of laid the, the structure out for the evaluation system. And then I think our work for next year would be to continue to really say Particularly, you know, maybe at the elementary school, when we're able to have like a literacy coach next year. How can we leverage that resource to kind of really help uh, improve instruction in the classroom? Any other questions? Thank you for this comprehensive look at uh, the update on goals. Um, staffing updates, just three three quick ones. I'll give you the the first one. Well, no, I'll quick. There'll be with three of them. Uh, our BCBA, Kayla Kennedy, has. Um, resigned. Uh, I think she was new this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is her first year and uh, she's resigned. She, I think she uh, accepted a position in private practice um, for, the, for that license. Um, the director of pupil services search, um, that committee did meet and um, we did not feel comfortable with the applicant pool that we had received. Um, so that we have reposted, we reposted that position as an interim director of, of pupil services. At the same time, we've also posted for a part-time interim director of ELL. Um, we wouldn't hire both of those positions. It's just to kind of cast that net and see what we can find. Because really, I think that you know one of the main goals we want to accomplish with that position that we need to is is getting some more leadership support for our, for our English language learner students and knowing that. You know, we know doing our self-assessment this year through the tiered focus monitoring um, that we're going to have some corrective action that we're probably going to have to take in that area, and we just want to make sure that we're um, trying to bring some expertise in to kind of look at that. So, so that's really the uh, the uh, the gist of that. So, there's if you do see, there's two different postings out right now. They both say interim. Those two postings would never both be filled. Um, only one would be filled. It's just trying to trying to see how we can capture that that candidate. Um, and the last update would be the uh, part-time athletic director position. Um, that posting has closed. That closed on Friday. Uh, we have a screening committee that's going to meet to review the applicants. 
on Thursday um, so we can figure out uh, what we're going to do for interviews and that kind of stuff. There was, there was a large response. Uh, I think there were almost 40 applicants for that position. Um, but I do think that uh, one, one of the challenges that committee will have is we'll have to reach out to some of those applicants because, um, you know, some of them do, you know, look at their resumes. Obviously, they're empo employed full time. Um, and we'd have to make sure that we kind of explain the dynamics and what we're looking for in that role a little more clearly to them probably um, before we get to the interview process. But we'll let our screening committee look at that and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I think that's, that's all I really had for the staffing updates. Um, for facilities updates, um, uh, I know Russ, the facilities manager, has reached out to the MSBA about what the status was for our middle school project. Um, I know that they had started to contact some other districts. That's why, at least have some in contact with other districts. That's why uh, Russ reached out. He asked me if I'd heard anything. I said I hadn't. Um, they said that they would most likely be uh, reaching out to us to schedule a site visit to come and view the school um, in like August or September, uh, which is a good sign. Uh, I think, you know, anytime we get the get them to come out here and take a look at the building, I think that's positive. Um, you know, I'm not gonna jump to any conclusions about that, but it's good to at least get the MSBA out here so they can assess the condition of the building and, and see what they're looking at. Great. Uh, there's still a couple, we still, the, the project to look at solar on the roof um, is still, kicking around. Um, I don't know if I updated you on this before, but they kind of redesigned the system so that it's a like a reflective, white reflective membrane, and then there's solar panels kind of on the back of the panels to integrate the roof as part of the system um, so that they could do the roof replacement with the solar panel installation. Um, they're kind of, there's some, been some conversations with uh, town council and stuff on the procurement for that. So that's not necessarily, um, the project hasn't just fallen off. There's just kind of looking at the procurement and legalities and cost feasibility of that whole thing. But um, it would essentially probably end up not being a cost savings in terms of you know month to month on our electric bill. What it would be is basically savings that would offset the cost of the roof. So we could get new roofs on this building and the middle school building essentially for free because of the savings through the solar. So that's the that's what that would look at. Um, and I know we're still working on some upgrades for, uh, still working on the, the HVAC system in this building and uh, kind of working on, Russ has been working on getting some different um, different contractors in here. I know the re-engineering side of part, one part of it. And the uh, central office building, um, one of the new doors has been installed. Um, remember those were approved last year. That, that, that construction has now started. So one of the new doors is installed and they're going to, just work the way around the building. So the the next item is we have to entertain a motion to appoint you to the flat board. Correct. Okay. So would someone like to make a motion to appoint Dr. Meyer to serve on the uh, flat board? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? There being none. All those in favor? Congratulations. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to be like a senior member on that board and like, uh, yeah. by next year, yeah. all the retirements around here. Um, so I guess that brings us to me at this point. I'm presuming that we don't have anything new from either policy or marketing. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, we, uh, we asked, I guess, if we could push back the evaluation piece. Uh, you know, pending this review, are there any other questions on uh, the evidence that Dr. Meyer submitted? Okay, thanks very much. Yeah. Okay. So, so then our amended timeline is that by July six. So, July sixteenth, we'll present that evaluation to you. So, if by July the weekend after July fourth. If you could get that to me. You want it on the 4th? Not on the 4th. I will not, you can get it to me on the 4th. I don't believe that I will be working on it on the 4th. And I would say, I'd just like to just throw out there one more time. If you have any other questions come up, if you're looking at something and say, you know, hey, I thought he did this or I thought the school district did this, and feel free to email me and I can provide you whatever evidence or uh, artifact you might be looking for. Thank you. Thank you.
Anything under old business? Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, can we possibly invite Mr. Duffy down here to talk to us about where the what the status is of the fire, fire station? station. Yeah. Yep. It's been a, I know we have he hasn't been down here for a while. I always learn a lot when he comes down here. <laughs> no, I'm yep. serious. I, I I just it'd be nice to and I know you stay in contact with them, but um, no, I'd but like that, getting that more. RFP for that building after that grant is still something we've been chasing down. So I think uh, okay. it would be good good to kind of yeah, say let's secure that and get him down here. Or, well, I'll invite him to the 16th, assuming he's in yep. town. If not, we'll get him at the you know the one of the first August meetings or something. Sure okay. thing. Anything under new business? I'm sorry. Is there anything else under old business? Is there anything under new business? Yes. Just a reminder: this Thursday evening at the town hall is the eighth grade recognition night, starting at six p.m. Hopefully, you got your invitations. It's been crazy, uh, but we'd love to have you here. Do, do you? Uh, do, does the office need RSVPs from us? Um, it'd be nice, but it's. I'm a yes. <laughs> I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I played on Friday, but yeah, okay. I'll, I'll you. yeah. Okay. Be coach minor league. I don't know when they start the game, so <laughs> it's either Thursday or Friday. I think it's Friday. Okay. What time Phil, give me your season's what time going. Well. Do you show up about quarter about ten? Quarter to six. Quarter to six. Okay. Quarter six. Yeah, then four seven. Great. Great. <laughs> I think I think it's Friday. Yeah. So just I just have a couple of things I'd like yep. to share if that's okay. Sure. Um, there's there's been a couple um, community events the last couple of days. Um, all right, you know, with the Parks and Rec and the school have been able to kind of interact. On Friday, there was a uh, free little library um, mm -hmm. that was put at the uh, down at Depot Square. Uh, the library itself was kind of made in uh, at the high school and um, put down there. It was a nice. That was a nice. Uh, Little ceremony, and then today, uh, down at Savage Field or Vale Street, um, the mural by the uh, art students um, that was created on that the wall down the first the base side yeah. um, was kind of formally formally dedicated, and that was another one in cooperation with the Parks and Rec. So I think there's been been a lot of collaboration with them uh, the last couple last couple of days. Um, one other thing, you just reminded me of this one that uh, on June 20th at Clinton Hospital, there's a Clinton Business Forum. It's it's at 7:30 in the morning. It's like 7:30 to 9. Um, I went to that event last year. Um, ended up just kind of speaking. Now this year, I'm I made the agenda, but we'll be uh, <laughs> so we'll be there. And uh, so that it was a nice event. They just invite all the local business owners in town and. Um, so it made me think when I said Mr. Duffy, because he, mm -hmm. he, along with the uh, the chamber, kind of put, coordinate that. Just the 20th? 20th, yep, at Clinton Hospital. And uh, the last thing I just would like to kind of acknowledge, uh, you know, we did have, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, shortly after our last meeting, we had a little bit of an uh, incident at the elementary school. We had a little bit of an incident up here. And uh, we were able to really just work um, well, I think with the Clinton Police Department through that, and and just kind of even just the you know the security the um, the presence they had at the uh, graduation and everything, I think really just really worked well and felt really supported by the by the police department, and it was great to um, to you know to, to work well with them and, and just make sure it felt like we were all on the same page. Um, I also would like to just kind of you know when we were kind of going through some of those that that incident took place. You know, um, Mike Ward, the town administrator, reached out to me that day just to kind of see if there's anything, you know, that he could be of assistance with. Um, you know, uh, Sean Kerrigan, one of the selectmen, called me that night just to make sure uh, things were going. So I just, I just feel like there's been an, uh, a lot of support um, and, and collaboration um, between, you know, whether it's Parks and Rec, selectmen, town administrator, police, director, uh, you know, economic development. So I just feel like, uh, you know, I think it's really seen a lot of that in the last month or so and just wanted to bring it up. Thank you for sharing. So. It's uh, great to have synergy and uh, I, I think, you know, you, you can't always predict how uh, things are going to happen and unfold in the schools, but I don't think we could have asked for a better uh, coordinated response and, you know, I, I'm grateful as well and would like to extend my appreciation to all of the agencies that uh, were, were part of uh, everything that they do for our schools. Anything else under 
but sorry. Yes, as you said, we can't always plan for things to go like clockwork. Um, I'd like to publicly thank my son, Caleb Best, for becoming me on Memorial Day when I found myself uh, hospitalized. And uh, Sunday morning at 6 when I'm saying to them, you're just going to stitch my head up. And I have a parade to march in yesterday, uh, tomorrow. And, and they're saying, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> so um, we did train our band members well while they went to Clinton Middle School and Clinton High School. Um, because some people even said, you did a great job on, on Monday. And I said, didn't you see that young man? Because <laughs> I wasn't there. So um, I, I'm just pleased that you know we have trained our band members going through the system well that in an emergency, they can step in and like this. Thank you. You did a great and, job. And please thank nice. Caleb for us. From us. Anything else? Any other public comment? There being none, we will adjourn, but we will adjourn under Chapter 30A, Section 21 of Massachusetts General Law, Open Meeting Law. The committee will enter into executive session to discuss collective bargaining with the CTA. The committee will not reconvene. It requires a roll call vote. Brendan Bailey, aye. Yeah. Joel Bates, aye. Tina Zapanza, aye. Ben Devault, aye. Aye, aye, aye.